Oh, you mother <laughs> Okay. All right. I'm putting cases on all you Huh? You think you can do this? Yay! Yeah! You think you can do this to me? You motherfuckers will be playing basketball in Pelican Bay when I get finished with you. <laughs> hey, yo. Thanks for tuning in to The Source, your source for celebrity news. Check this out. Freddie P from Making a Band is getting a little backlash after he revealed that the night that P. Diddy made him and the band walk to Brooklyn to get some cheesecake, they were getting that cheesecake for Beyonce. You know something? I want me a piece of cheesecake. <laughs> from, you know where to get the cheesecake spot is at. Um, yeah. Yeah, bitch. and y'all can walk from here, get the cheesecake, see the city, enjoy the sights, would you? Frederick, you alright? Right. Good. This dude must be crazy. Sooner or later, we gonna clash. Word is funny. My cheesecake, my cheesecake is in the least bit soft, a brittle, or not on point. Yo, we'll go back. You know what Junior's is at? Yo, fam, Puffy just told us to go to the store in Brooklyn and bring him back a cheesecake and walk. Okay, fun fact a lot of people don't know. That cheesecake we went and got was for Beyonce. She was upstairs the whole time. People were like, y'all walked and got a cheesecake. It was for Beyonce. Yeah, because at first he was like, I want some cheesecake. But we took all night to do the process, right? So when we got back, it was like four or five in the morning. And uh, me and Dalon got back first. Let me tell you how green these niggas is. So if you say, walk to the store, or walk to get me some cheesecake, I'll walk to get you some cheesecake. But I'm not walking back. And that's just what me and Dalon did. Y'all cheating. And we like, he told us to walk. He ain't tell us to walk back. So we already in the hotel like three hours before they got there. When they said they was coming, we went and met him in front of the building. Oh, they said, oh, no. we got the cheesecake. He was like, oh, I want that shit. Take that shit upstairs for Beyonce. Now, after Freddie P revealed this information, a whole bunch of people had something to say. And one person said, he's lying. This is a Dave Chappelle skit. And then somebody else said, it's just bad enough. You ain't gotta lie. And then after that, somebody else came through and was like, need the other people to confirm it. And then somebody else was like, y'all think MTV would have missed an opportunity to have Beyonce make a cameo, even for a second in making a band? And it's a time in her career where she still agreed to make TV appearances. And then after that, somebody else came through and they were like, mm-mm, I know Freddie P personally. He stand on principles. He wouldn't lie. Kid thorough. Listen, let me know in the comments. Do you believe that that cheesecake was for Beyonce? And if it was for Beyonce, do you think that Beyonce owes all the kids from making a band a little something something? I mean, at least a thank you note. <laughs> <laughs> or something let me know in the comments and while you're down there leaving a comment be sure to like and subscribe to the channel and share this video with your friends now check this out now that Diddy's gotten locked up a whole bunch of people are scouring through the internet to see if they can find incriminating videos against Diddy and one of the videos that they found was an old clip of Claudia Jordan saying that P Diddy once threatened her after she posted a photo of him and her on the internet I met Diddy one time I was at the BET Awards in 2008, I think it was, when mm -hmm. MySpace was still around. Mm -hmm. um, I was at rehearsal, he was at rehearsal, and he comes up to me and says, um, what party are you going to? So I was like, I don't know, wouldn't you know where the party's on? And he's like, yeah, so he got my phone number, and he said he would let me know what the popping places were. I was like, cool, that's it. I went back to my, my house, got changed, came back to the award show, and I presented at the BET Awards when I was on the show Ballers, all right? It was a sports show on BET. Yeah. So when I was on stage, he texted me and says, you look so pretty. He's like, come backstage, we're all having drinks. It, it's a bunch of us. I was like, all right, I'm bringing my best friend, Alta, who had just been to me. We go backstage, we had some drinks. I had one of them cheap ass disposable cameras. Okay, I said, oh, can we get some pictures? We took a picture. Anyone that knows me knows how playful I am. I put my hand on his face like this, and he was behind me like, like, you know, and I put it on my MySpace, right? I put all the people I met, Patti LaBelle, LL Cool J, The Picture With Duty, Kim Kardashian, all the people. If, if anyone can get into my old MySpace, you can see all the pictures. Um, he never called me that night to tell me what party he's going to. I didn't hear from him. The next day, I get a gang of text messages and phone calls from a new, the New York number, from his number, saying, baby girl, why are our personal pictures on, on media takeout? I said, what's media takeout? I didn't know what media takeout was at the time. He was like, call Fred gave me his bat line and get this off I go get what off I went and looked it was like Diddy leaves Cassie for deal or no deal model I was horrified A I don't I don't do that second the other girls here I'm very adamant against that B I don't want to get tired to Diddy, to Diddy like that I was cool with Kim Porter it was not a good list to me and he just had the twins so anyways I started calling trying to get this shit taken down this motherfucker texted me 
56 times in one day. And his moods went from baby girl, why are our pictures too? If I thought you did this on purpose, I would have had you hurt. And it got crazy. So I called him back one time with my publicist friend on the line and she heard him say that he would make me disappear. So then I had to buck up back with him and say, look, my don't talk to me like that. I'm not scared of you. This is before I heard about some other shitty people. Yeah. Right? Yeah. <laughs> people upside down out of buildings. So I was talking off like, man, fuck you. You didn't talk to me like that. And then he goes, what are you wearing? And his tone changed. And I go, what? I never talked to him again. He never called me after that. And I have the phone still. I just have to, like, I couldn't charge it. The charge for it went dead. So I still kept it, right? I have it. So fast forward years later, I'm at Howard's Homecoming. An SUV drives by me. And someone says, someone wants to talk to you. And the road on the window, it's Diddy. And he goes, oh, you can't speak? And I was like, oh, I didn't think we were friends after the last time I fucking interacted with you. And that is it, you guys. Listen, I just don't understand these celebrities. If me and you take a photo at a party, and that photo gets out, and after it gets out, you call my phone 56 times and threaten to murk me, me and you ain't gonna be cool. And you certainly can't roll up on me in a black SUV years later talking about, yo, you can't speak? Nah, son, because I don't get down like that. I would have looked at that dude like he was absolutely crazy. See, I think one of the problems in Hollywood is that a whole lot of these celebrities let a whole lot of stuff slide because they're so pressed to be close to the money and they want to be in the next movie and they want to be invited to the next party. Uh-uh, son. If you threaten to murk me, me and you are enemies until Jesus comes back to break up the fight. And don't get me wrong, because I'm not a rah-rah chick. I'm not running around out here trying to fight. But what I do have is boundaries. And you saying that you're going to moiter me is one of my boundaries. <laughs> Listen, I mean, isn't that one of your boundaries? If somebody says they're going to murk you, isn't that a boundary? Listen, let me know in the comments. If Diddy did you like he did Claudia Jordan and threatened to delete you, would you still be cordial with Diddy? I mean, would you walk over to his SUV when he called you over there to talk? Let me know in the comments. All right, this is crazy. Another law firm has jumped into the ring, and they say that they are representing over 50 people who claim that P. Diddy assaulted them. All right, so the other day, Tony Busby at a Busby law firm jumped online, and he wrote, Tony Busby law firm has been associated by the Ava Law Group to act as legal counsel to pursue claims on behalf of more than 50 individuals who suffered actual assault and abuse at the hands of Sean Diddy Combs and his cohorts. This group of brave individuals includes both men and women. Many were minors when the abuse occurred. Some of these brave individuals reported the incidents to the police, others did not. Each individual's story is gut-wrenching and heartbreaking. The acts complained of occurred at hotels, private homes, and also at the infamous P. Diddy freak-off parties. The violations against this group of individuals are mind-boggling and can only be described as debauchery and depravity exacted by powerful people against minors in a week. I expect the group seeking redress will grow as this case progresses. I expect many other individuals will be implicated. We expect to have a press conference early next week where some of these stories can be told as the nation learns more and grapples with the potential scope of this scandal. Our firm has always been at the forefront of the most important cases in the United States and we're proud to represent this group of brave souls and pray for justice on their behalf. Listen, I don't even know what to say anymore. I think that the only thing you can say is like, Damn, Diddy. Damn, 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 Diddy. How much sex did you have to have? Because, I mean, this right here is getting ridiculous. I mean, you got Cassie, you got the other 12 women who were suing them, and then you got, like, another 50? What's that, 63 people and counting? Oh, my goodness. If this is true, then P. Diddy was like Bill Cosby on steroids. Now, you may or may not have heard this, but P. Diddy's attorneys are planning on letting P. Diddy testify up on their stand. Watch this. Does this compel you to put him on the stand and explain it? I don't know that I could keep him off the stand. Uh, I, I think he is very eager to tell his story. And I think he will tell every part of the story, including what you see on the videos. It's kind of breathtaking that what you're telling me is that Diddy is going to take the stand and he will be cross-examined about the freak-offs, about allegedly blowing up a car, all of those things. That feels kind of dicey. He has his story and it's a human story. It's a story of, of, of love. It's a story of hurt. It's a story of a heartbreak. 
I mean, when he describes that relationship, the word he uses more than any other word is heartbreak. He was heartbroken. She was heartbroken. Listen, if I was P. Diddy, I'd be up in MDC trying to find me a different attorney. Because this dude right here, I don't know if he can provide Diddy with the adequate level of defense that Diddy's going to need when he goes to court. Because when this dude right here said that mad people buy bulk baby oil at Costco... <laughs> <laughs> I was done. I was like, oh my goodness, Diddy's done. I mean, where in the world did Diddy get this dude from? Because if it was me, I'd feel more comfortable rolling in the court with like a hologram of Johnny Cochran than walking in the court with this dude. Now, I don't know how much P. Diddy is paying this law firm, but do you guys understand that part of the reason why P. Diddy did not get granted bond is because this dude and the attorneys that work at his law firm accidentally sent in the wrong unedited paperwork to the judge requesting bond. Oh my goodness. Check this out. Diddy is in trouble. Oh yeah, he has been arrested and held without bail on a variety of charges related to trafficking, uh, regoing. What happened uh, when they asked for bail? Lawyers sent a letter, you know, as one does, to the judge asking for there to be bail instated and unfortunately left the tracked changes visible. So uh, there's a shame. In the middle of the letter, you can see uh, comments that some reviewer left like this sentence reads awkward <laughs> yeah <laughs> yo what type of attorney sends in the unedited paperwork to the judge with the background notes on it oh my goodness did he screwed <laughs> <laughs> wow. Anyhow, I'm thinking that right about now would be a good time for Fat Joe to take back the comments that he made about Diddy when he said that Diddy is the smartest dude in the world. Man, I'm sure. smarter than everybody. And I asked him when we alone. It's like his house, man, shit and shit. They cooking for us. Me and him, just me and Puff. He was like, yo, you know you the realest nigga ever. I said, yo, Puff, I don't really need it. He said, no, I want you to know you the realest one. I said, but yo, Puff, he said that he studied all the grades. He had his whole game plan. Puff Daddy is the king yeah. of deception. Yeah. We've been doing this for real. Yeah. We can't be mad at him. We always gotta use him as inspiration. We was like, yo, this guy parties too much. But little did we know he was networking in there. If he threw a party, he threw a party with somebody who would be impressed by all his friends being there so he could party. So Puff, what I learned from him is uh he knew branding, networking, he knew everything before everybody. He was smarter than everybody. Everybody took notes from Puff. Listen, can somebody tell Fat Joe that he might not want to be out there bragging about taking notes from Puff? Because <laughs> the only thing that P. Diddy knew that everybody else didn't know was how to invite Big Willies to his parties, videotape them while they were doing it dirty with illegal ex-workers, and then blackmail them later. Listen, if I was Fat Joe, I would do like Usher and start scrubbing my Twitter feed. <laughs> <laughs> now, similar to Boosie Badass, Dr. Umar, and Benzino, Faison Love is the latest dude to jump on social media acting stupid. First, Faison made it seem like he doesn't understand what X trafficking is, and then he said that women who come to Hollywood parties and go to parties like Diddy parties aren't innocent because they're dirty broads. Okay, uh, Diddy is indicted. What? And arrested for racketeering sex trafficking by force they're calling it a commercial sex enterprise yeah i heard that and i'm not taking it up for him i just didn't understand the charges because normally those are the charges they give to gangsters and pimps in california trafficking is a legal substance and i thought trafficking was when you take women from bosnia to here or whatever the or, but to say that he's freaky all i heard was he's freaky i didn't i didn't see in it. He loves doing freaky shit, which most people knew, but you know, I've been knowing him since probably 2000 and I've never seen, I've never seen a Diddy party empty. There's security. Are you on the list? No. I see my try to jump over the fence. Somebody cuts the people out. My name ain't on the list, but I've never seen, hey man, if you go in there, man, because of course there's drugs. There, everybody, it's Hollywood. That's why people go to Hollywood for the debauchery. Let's not get it twisted. Ain't nobody innocent in Hollywood. They want to see the orgy. A lot of these girls only, <laughs> they try to make seem like a lot of these women are just, they came from a nun dispensary or something. Like these are dirty, they're porn stars. The only reason why they wear panties is to keep their ankles warm. Okay, 
So first off, I need for everybody to stop acting like they don't understand what X trafficking is. Because it's very, very simple. It's the action or practice of illegally transporting people, and I repeat, illegally transporting people from one place or area to another for the purpose of actual exploitation. When someone's being ex-trafficked, they're being forced to do something against their will. That force could be someone putting a pistol on them. That force could be someone kidnapping them. That force could be someone drugging them, etc. And just so Boosie Badass knows, that's very different than being flewed out. Because when someone's flewed out, it's usually two consenting adults deciding to meet up. And as far as Faison saying that these chicks is dirty, they're porn stars, the only reason they wear panties is to keep their ankles warm. I don't know if it's different in LA, but where I'm from, the majority of women aren't freaks who go to parties to get involved in debauchery. We go to parties to have a little fun, dance, socialize, and then go home. And back in the day when I was invited to a Diddy White party in the Hamptons, the last thing that I was thinking is that I could possibly be invited to an after party after the party where I might be drugged and abused by a bunch of rich men who have nothing better to do than to violate and videotape women. See, the problem with Faison's statement is that he makes it seem like all women who accept invites to parties like Diddy's know what dangers lurk in a Ciroc, the Deleon, and a baby oil, and they go to the parties because they want to get diddled by dudes like the Diddler, and that's absolutely not the case. Listen, let me know what you think below. Do you agree with Faison Love when he says that the only reason these dirty chicks wear panties when they go to parties like Diddy parties is because they want to keep their ankles warm? Let me know what you think about that in the comments. Alright, so recently, TMZ caught up with Little Romeo, aka Romeo Miller, and they asked him about what he thought about Diddy. And Romeo said that he believes that Diddy should apologize to his victims behind closed doors and try to make things right, because God forgives all. But, for us humans, it might be a little bit harder. One time, I want to know, you know, like, with the whole Diddy party type situation, is that normal for a Hollywood party, you know? I'm a real man of God, and all I say is at the end of the day, <laughs> <laughs> Nah, but I do want to give some gems out to kids out there, because you got to live and you got to learn from other people, and when you get that much power, you got to be willing to do what's right. Most importantly, build a foundation of righteousness, you know? Everything comes full circle. And from my experience, I would say that you always got to apologize. If you do wrong in any way, you got to go to that person behind closed doors and um, try to make it right. Nobody's perfect, so you have to do your best part. When you know you messed up or effed up, try to make it right. God forgives all, right? But humans, it's a little bit harder for us to forget. How do you think that he can make it right? Or do we gotta take the ball for you know? Oh man, that's, you gotta talk to God, you know? That, that's. Okay, so after Romeo weighed in on the P. Diddy situation, a whole bunch of people came in the comment section, and one person said, listen, Romeo operated from a very high vibration. He only gonna see the light in this situation. And then somebody else was like, he handled that well. And then after that, somebody else came through and was like, Romeo always been solid. Listen, let me tell you something. I agree 100% with Romeo, and I believe that if Diddy truly repents for his sins and turns to God, God will forgive him. But forgiveness doesn't mean that if he's guilty of the crimes that he's accused of committing, that he needs to go free. But it does mean that if he does get convicted, God may have a new will, plan, and purpose for his life. Do you realize how many young men Diddy could potentially help mentor and teach to be entrepreneurs while he's behind bars? I mean, he could potentially help hundreds of men who are currently incarcerated go from being inmates to becoming moguls if he allows God to use him while he's locked up. Listen, let me tell you something from experience. If Diddy learns to let go and let God, then he's going to realize that sometimes God will turn your test into a testimony. Now, on to some other news. The other day, T.I.'s son Kang was shooting a video in preparation for his new TV show. And while he was shooting a video, T.I. and Boosie noticed that him and his friends were over there waving their weapons in the air like they just didn't care. So, Boosie and T.I. rolled up on Kang and his friends like real men with some common sense and told them, you better not show not one weapon in this video. Now, after Boosie and T.I. checked him, King Harris jumped online to let everybody know that he doesn't own any weapons and that the hard persona that he presents to the public is only an act. It's a show. It's a persona that he puts on to make you think that he's hard, but it's not real. Watch this. We got a TV show. They pull up trying to check us for a TV show, man. But y'all got to tell these people y'all want to see the TV show. Me and Tootie got a TV show with me and Boosie. I mean, with uh, Pops and Boosie. Please, please. Please. I don't post guns. 
Y'all ain't never seen me post a gun ever in life. I don't even own a gun. Yeah, that nigga say. That nigga say. You be around two to a lot, you gonna be taking some licks. Ooh, shit. <laughs> I'm not that guy. I'm not that guy. This is for. I'm, a, I'm for entertainment purposes only. Not taking this shit. Listen, King Harris is full of ish. What must have happened is T.I. must have pulled him up and been like, listen, son, me and your mom just won $79 million and Diddy just got locked up. So we gonna need you to tone it down and rein it in expeditiously because we don't want the feds over here looking at us. <laughs> now, check this out. Slim Thug jumped online to let everybody know that he's voting for Kamala Harris. And the reason why he's voting for Kamala Harris is simply because she's black. Check this out. How is you black not represent for the black woman? Like, I can understand white people vote for Trump or any other race. You know what I'm saying? I can understand other races vote for Trump because they on some real... I'm going to vote for Kamala strictly because she black. I don't even know her motherfucking uh, policies. I'm not finna not vote for the black lady, though. I don't know what type of people y'all is. I'm voting for the black woman, kid. It shouldn't even be nothing to think about. Oh, man, she's gonna take her gun. She not black. Stop the cap, man. Kamala is black, kid. She a ski wee chick. Stop the cap, man. You already know she ski wee. Shut the... Y'all sound like some conspiracy theory. She locked boys up. Trump just said on TV... He's going to give police free range on you dumbass niggas. Free range on you dumbass niggas. He said it. It's part of his policy. Hey, man, whatever the police want to do, they can do it. You dumbass niggas. And, and y'all just geeked up. She married a white. I ain't. I don't care about who she married. She a black woman. <laughs> Listen, like I always say. To each his own, but personally, I'm not supporting anyone or voting them into the highest office in the land simply because they're black. I mean, real talk, if Barack Obama was running for his second term as president, but during his first term, he had conspired to seize control of the government by promoting an impromptu coup d'etat, I wouldn't be voting for Barack again. But that's me, because I'm looking for the best president, not the president that looks like me. And when I'm thinking about presidents, I'm looking at qualities like integrity, past qualifications, policy moral fortitude and overall ability and I'm also looking for a president who's trustworthy mature decisive and not divisive and to me it's only icing on the cake when the candidate who just so happens to have all of those qualities just so happens to be black <laughs> listen let me know what you think about slim thug saying he's voting for Kamala Harris for president in 2024 simply because she's black Yo, let me know what you think about Freddie P saying the cheesecake that Diddy made him walk to Brooklyn to get was for Beyonce. Claudia Jordan saying Diddy once threatened to delete her over a photo. Diddy's attorney saying that he's definitely going to take the stand. Diddy's attorney's also submitting the wrong paperwork to the court when they asked for bond. Fat Joe saying that Diddy is the smartest dude in the world. Faison Love saying that the women who attend parties like Diddy's know what's up. Little Romeo saying Diddy needs to let go and let God. T.I. and Boozy checking King Harris and telling him he better not be playing around with weapons. And Slim Thug saying he's voting for Kamala Harris simply because she's black. Let me know what you think about all of that in the comments. And while you're down there leaving a comment, be sure to like and subscribe to the channel. And share this video with your friends. Hey yo, thanks for tuning in to The Source. Your source for celebrity news. Peace.